Hi, I'm Matt Hill. I'm the curriculum designer here at MRU. Sorry. And this is the slide walkthrough video for our last day of the intro unit plan markets. Okay, so we start with a little guessing game, little bell ringer. How many countries are involved in the production of the iPhone? Again, take guesses, maybe give a prize out for whoever's closest. The answer is 43, at least according to um, our internet research, it's 43. And so how are all those countries coordinated? What, how does that happen? How do 43 countries, you know, different factories, different people all come together to make the iPhone? It's a fantastically complicated thing. And the answer is markets. Markets are the coordinating mechanism. And so we have our first video here that sort of talk about the magic of markets, how markets through the price system does that coordination. Um, so we have this we have this version of the video. We also have a Nearpod version, if you prefer the Nearpod uh, version. If you watch the video, answer the question, sort of introduces uh, markets. Then we get to our first um, analogy, which is to think of markets as AI. AI, obviously, very uh, popular. Everyone's talking about AI. What what AI is doing when you're you know typing a question into Chat GPT? It's basically pulling from all that knowledge, all that written word to give you an answer. And when it works, it can feel like uh, magic when you're, you know, asking it a specific thing or asking it to do something, it's pulling all that knowledge and it's just distilling it to you. Markets are like this too. We've had something like AI for, you know, uh, thousands of years in that markets. And in, in, in the modern economy with an advanced market, when you go to a store, it's like, the market has coordinated all these people to bring you the item that you specifically want at an uh, usually an incredibly surprisingly cheap uh, price. And you may disagree with that, but if you think about just the famous example is the pencil. Nobody can build a pencil from scratch. Nobody knows how. I mean, if you if you told me to build a pencil, you know, from scratch, I'd have to go out, get some rubber, I don't know, cut down a tree. It'd be very difficult. But the market coordinates all these people, all the all their talents, all their skills, and you get a pencil for about five cents. Okay. Think about this. Uh grapefruit, whatever, cereal. It's it, it the market coordinates it, and you can just go and buy it, and there it is. So that is the magic of markets. And so first analogy is AI. Our next video goes in a little more depth of how the price system works with this phrase, a price is a signal wrapped in the uh, in an incentive with the idea that the price is basically signaling to people, you know, this thing's more valuable, this thing's less valuable, and it's providing also the um, incentive. So another fun video with some questions. Again, there's Nearpod versions. Now, next way to view uh, markets, so we talked about AI, is as a source of innovation or finding economic truths. Okay. And to really set this up, how markets produce innovation, you want to think about a system without markets. And so we have some examples um, of this through history. Okay, so without a market. So in a market, you could just take the product to the consumer. And if the consumer likes it, they buy it. If they don't, boom, yeah, you know, you, you go out of business. But without a market with a more like centralized, authoritized system, a less bottom-up system, a more top-down system, you got to get approval. So here are some examples. And so there's an inventor that comes up with unbreakable flexible glass. This is, you know, maybe a myth, but it's in it's in uh, it's in a few of the Roman history uh, books. So the uh, the inventor, he comes, goes to the emperor and says, hey, look, I got this, uh, you know, unbreakable flexible glass. You know, isn't this great? And what happens to the inventor? Murdered. All right. The uh, emperor puts him to death to protect the glass makers. Another example is 1589. William Lee says, look, I made this new uh, knitting machine. What happens to him? Well, Queen Elizabeth doesn't have him killed, but she rejects the uh, request for a patent and funds to develop the machine uh, further. Again, if this was a modern system, William Lee could take it to investors and say, hey, look, I got this. If they think it's a good idea, they'll give him some money. He'll develop it and take it to the consumer. And if it's uh, if it's good, then, you know, off off he goes. Last example, we have an engineer who invents the digital uh, camera. At, he's at Kodak. He invents the digital camera. What happens to him? Well, he's not he's not murdered, thankfully, and he's not rejected. 
Um, and he actually stays at Kodak for uh, the remainder of his uh, engineering career. But Kodak is not the one who develops the digital camera. Kodak is not the company that bring it brings it to um, uh, uh, mass uh, uh, to consumers. Basically, they were afraid. All right, we got this great business going. If you don't know Kodak, if your students don't know Kodak, you can explain to them. It's a film camera company. So before digital cameras or before actually people don't even have digital cameras anymore. They just have the cameras on their phone. Um, but there were film cameras where, you know, you take a picture and then there'd be uh, like actual film inside and you'd have to get it developed. And so they were, you know, leaders in this business. So they were like, oh, if we, de- if we develop the digital camera, um, you know, that's going to eat in to our traditional business. And so they didn't develop it. Other companies came along and developed it. And so this is the idea. If you have to get approval for new inventions, it's going to upset the Apple cart. Like somebody is going to be displaced. So oftentimes these approvals are not granted. You know, we have the Roman example where the, the person's killed. We have the uh, uh, 16th century example where it's just not funded. And we have this example where the company's like, hey, cool, but we're, you know, that's not, we're not going to do that. You could actually think of a, a recent example where with AI, how it wasn't like Google that came out with the first, you know, path breaking AI, even though Google was ahead at AI, they're worried that the AI would eat into their search business if they came out with it. And so they basically had to be prodded by open AI who come out with chat GPT to dive in to um, AI. Okay. So markets, another way we could think about them is this is the place where um, basically innovations are taken to um, the consumers and the consumers can desp- can decide, is this useful? Is this not useful? This is called permissionless innovation. So this is one of the ways that markets drive growth. Fundamentally, where does growth come from? Economic growth. It comes from innovation, new technologies, coming up with new products and coming up with better ways to make existing products or uh, higher quality uh, existing products. And so markets facilitate this by incentivizing um, innovation. Guessing game uh, number two to show how far we've come, how how inno- how far innovation has taken us. In 1800, how many hours would you need to work to buy enough light for an hour? You know, so, you know, you, you know, to buy light right now, you know, you basically paying your electric electricity bill, and you know, you get to turn the lights on. In 1800, a little more complicated. You know, you had candles and whatnot. So think, how many hours would I need to work to purchase to make enough money to buy light for an hour? Fifty hours and today it takes one second of you know with average wages okay and here you can see the price of light going down over time all right now so this whole lecture is basically singing the praises of markets saying look how great markets are they bring us all these goods and in this last slide where it's like all right look we're not dogmatic about markets we know they can fail in some settings if one company dominates the market um, you know, that's a monopoly um, that's going to subvert this, these, these, these market process, uh, processes, um, externalities. So, you know, the classic example of uh, pollution markets oftentimes um, don't do a good job of pricing in um, those externalities. Um, and then if there's asymmetric information, if somehow, you know, consumers and producers don't have the same set of information, the market may not necessarily function well. Okay. Ask your students to do a brain dump. Think about the last thing they uh, bought and then write down as many people as they can think of who were involved in the production of that item. You can encourage them, maybe say whoever thinks of the most, you know, gets a prize of some kind. Be creative. You know, you know the person who, uh, you know, the, the, the government agency that provides the water, uh, if it's Starbucks, say the last thing you brought was a coffee, like that's they're involved in the production. You know, the trucks that brought uh, the beans there, uh, the container ships, all these people are involved in the production. It's, it can be a very long list. And this is a wonderful video not produced by us. Um, and so, and it sort of goes through um, one person's story who tried to thank everybody involved in producing his morning cup of uh, cup of coffee. And it's real short. It's real nice. And so, Following up on this, just showing how many people are involved in these market processes, how many million farmers worldwide are making coffee? The answer is 25 million. Okay. As an exit ticket, have the students write a thank you note to somebody involved in their favorite product or service, You know, sort of as a follow-up activity to this thanks a thousand video. Have them just write some sort of thank you note. That could be an email, 
They could DM it. They could tweet. <laughs> as as I'm recording this, are they not called tweets anymore? Who knows? Um, uh, they can uh, uh, send this to um, somebody involved. And this can be a very rewarding experience, uh, hopefully in a good way to end uh, the intro to uh, economics. All right. There we are. That is the intro to economics lesson plan. Hope you enjoyed the walkthrough videos. Hope you adopt the lesson plan. Hope it works for you. You can always send us feedback um, at MRU, at our support box, support at MRU, or you can email me, matt at mru.org. All right. If you don't already have the unit plan, there is a link on screen. Or if you'd like to move to the next day, check out the next walkthrough video.